To install a laminate floor, first make room for the new flooring at doorways by cutting back casings and jams. Use a scrap of new flooring to gauge the cut and a handsaw to cut the casing. Then wrap around and cut the jam. Next, clean the room so there's no dust or debris to interfere with the new floor. Then roll out underlayment and cover the entire subfloor. Underlayment is cut to length, placed into position, and trimmed with a utility knife at edges where needed. At heating units and the like, it's trimmed and tucked underneath. Where pieces meet, the seams are sealed with seam tape to make it a continuous layer. On this product, the tape is integral. To install the flooring, begin on the longest wall and work left to right. The first row requires a rip cut to remove the lip and leave a clean edge. Here, a heating pipe obstructs the first piece and will require a special cut. Just mark with a pencil and use a coping saw to make the circular cut. Fit the piece and position it around the pipe. Then continue on with fitting and marking. Laminate floors lock together on all sides, each with its own proprietary system. Here, the end piece slips in as you fit and lock the pieces together. Edges fit together by lifting the top edge and connecting the interlocking joint. To cut lengths of laminate flooring, use a hand or miter saw to make clean square cuts. Once the first row is in, Subsequent rows just lock in place as you fan out and fill in the field. All rows are staggered for a random look. At door jams, temporarily install the adjacent piece to easily see the shape of the next one. Then take measurements and cut the piece. For tricky areas like this, where new flooring will extend under the casing and jam, shave the lip off the tongue with a sharp chisel and add glue to secure the joint. Then use the manufacturer's supplied beater block and a dead blow hammer to nudge it into position. Then continue with installation until the final row. Here again, it's necessary to shave the lip and add glue for strength. To fit the last piece, use the beater block and dead blow hammer to nudge the entire row down to make room. Then shave the lip off the end piece and the lip lengthwise and add glue to all joints before setting the piece and knocking the row back into position. The final transition is between the laminate floor and tile floor. Here we install a heavy bead of construction adhesive and sink a piece of T-molding into the gap to bridge the two floor surfaces. Painter's tape holds it in position as the adhesive sets up. Finally, we install shoe molding around the baseboard and at doorways, and the installation is complete. For more tools and projects, visit stanleytools.com slash project guides.